been about a month living with the Luba, having it cut the grass full time. I've sold my Simplicity lawn tractor, so it's all on Luba to do the grass cutting. With this more time under my belt, after the original install and setup video, I've got a few additional observation things I like and things that could be better. The first thing that could be better and I'm hopeful will be better with some software improvements is the cutting around the no-go zones. So this is what it looks like before string trimming. And I've got probably a foot and a half, two feet of uncut grass. And originally I was a little confused why that was happening. But if we look at our map, what we define as our zones, the Luba, the first thing it does is goes around the outside edge of the zones and does what it calls border patrol and does cuts right up tight to the edge of that border. And at that, it's quite good. But when we've got the no-go zone defined within our overall zone, like this shape here, it doesn't do those border cuts and simply relies on the Luba coming up to the edge and doing its turn while it's cutting and going back and forth. So it really does not get as close as I'd like on here. This is an example of how it cuts on the edge of a zone. So we've got less we've got you know where I was tight there on programming we've got a couple inches maybe four inches that's easily caught with the string trimmer unfortunately on these no-go zones that amount of cut grass does get pretty wide I still clean it up with a string trimmer it's easy enough to do it just takes longer than if that strip was smaller but this seems like a software limitation. It's not a limitation of the actual mower or the GPS capability of it. It's just a matter of creating an additional path or a loop around these no-go zones with inside the zone. So hopefully that comes in future software updates. One of the other things that could be better is watching it. It's kind of slow. In today's world, we want everything fast 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 get done doesn't really matter I've got my yard carved up into several zones so typically I do two zones a day and just have it rotate through the zones it keeps up very easily I've got a little bit less than an acre and it really doesn't need to be faster just if I had a choice it would be faster so I, I do need to say there's a caveat with that you can make it go faster i have it double cut i have it set on 1.4 feet per second that seems like a good compromise of speed and double cut uh, to minimize the amount of grass blades that aren't cut underneath the deck we've got two discs basically with those razor blades attached to it um, to really cut effectively faster those would have to spin faster um, to process more grass and then you've got airflow issues and some other things so i understand why they kind of net it out at this speed and it works fine for my application but like i said if i had a preference would i choose fast or would i choose slow yeah I, i'd choose faster but again this is very easy to live with one thing i am loving is the idea of, of a robot mower to begin with the fact that i don't have to think about when am i going to get time to cut the grass that novelty has not worn off yet after about a month. It still is awesome. Get busy doing something else, pop outside, take a look, and there is fresh cut grass that I didn't have to cut, and the lines are straighter than I could possibly ever make. And then overall reliability and performance of the mower are pretty good. They're not perfect. Um, it's still a setup issue on my part. The charging base, the Luba goes there to park when it's not being used and when it needs to charge while it's cutting. I wanted it under the overhang of the house to protect it from sun and rain and everything as much as possible. The problem is that blocks the GPS signal to the unit. So not only we've got the RTK antenna that needs line of sight to the sky to get uh, communicate with satellites, our Luba does even when it's sitting at the charging station. So. That's part of setup. I ended up with the antenna 
and the charging station right here. I'm gonna have to move this charging station. I could move it out away from the overhang in its current spot, but then it's kind of a trip hazard coming out of this door and the walkway. It'll be sticking right out at the edge where I kind of cut across to go out into the yard. So I think I'm gonna, ironically, move it back to the original location I had to this flower bed that's away from the house a little bit more it kind of grows out away from the house so I'm gonna put it back over there one of the reasons I've not done this yet is because during startup I was moving that antenna and the charging station to get good positioning and each time I did that I had to remap the entire yard all my zones all the no-go zones and I really haven't had time and not really looking forward to doing that but uh, as one of the commenters confirmed and I thought if I just move the charging station I shouldn't have to do that if I move the RTK antenna then everything's off all the position relative coordinates the all the triangulation that it does to get uh, its position is, is thrown off but I should be able to move the charging stations and retain all of the maps so I'm gonna do that and hopefully that clears out kind of all the lingering setup issues that I've had. So another thing is I'm getting a little bit of a dead spot in the grass where the Luba inexplicably spins around there. It doesn't need to, but something in the program causes it to do like a zero turn right there occasionally and kills the grass. So specifically the, the air I'm getting with the charging station here under the open hang right next to the house is poor positioning when the lube is docked at the charging station. So this can happen uh, when it's not mowing and then I give it a new job, a, a mow task, and say go and it won't go because it says poor positioning. Um, so what I have to do is manually you know, override the deal, manually drive it out into the yard and let it be exposed to the open sky. It will find itself and then I can tell it to mow. Not a big deal, uh, but just adds a little bit of uh, interaction by myself the other thing that's a little bit bigger of a deal of is if uh, some of my larger zones it can't finish the job without having to come charge and so what can happen there after two hours of mowing it'll come back charge up to 80 percent and then it won't leave again because it'll get a positioning error during charging and then i have to gain control and drive it out into the yard till it gets signal and, and let it go so take some of that autonomy away from what it's supposed to be the robot again not i'd still keep it and live with that if i couldn't fix it but i think we can fix it so uh, i'm gonna move it away from the house a little bit and so it, it gets uh hopefully does not get those positioning errors while charging i have successfully moved the charging station back to the original location i had it that's more open to the sky versus being under the overhang of the house I am getting significantly less signal errors for the Luba itself. I have noticed though, uh, we are in an area that's getting a lot of the wildfire smoke from Canada, Western Canada right now, uh, the jet stream's blowing in quite a bit of smoke from those wildfires. And on the days that it's pretty hazy, I have more signal problems, which makes sense. That's actually particulates in the air that's blocking today is nice and clear i've noticed when i have nice clear days um, and that smoke isn't coming down here i don't have signal air so i think uh, it's something i can live with and over time i'll get a better idea that and over time i'll get a better feel for that if i'm still having signal errors but so far so good i have not had any issues where it comes back to charge and it doesn't leave again due to signal errors which in the old location that was under the house's overhang i would get that it's been resolved with moving it here where it has an open look to the sky one other minor issue that i am getting and the signal error that not so much from the luba itself but from the rtk antenna I am getting a signal error occasionally and it is on those days again where I'm getting that wildfire smoke coming in otherwise it's pretty reliable but I think to make this even more robust and some of those precision errors go away they do now offer a bar to mount that on to bring it away from the house 
And if you look at the instruction, it wants a clear view, 45 degrees all the way around. And I think being on the lower part of this roof line, definitely to the west there it would be, I'm not getting a full 45 degree clearance. So that's something next year I might add on. It's getting pretty late in the cutting season now. And I would have to remap everything for that. So when I moved the charging station, I did not have to remap the entire lawn. There's a relocate charging station function in there. But if you move or rotate or do anything with this RTK antenna, you have to remap the entire lawn because it's using this as kind of the center and triangulation for all the positions of the mower. So that makes sense. If you do anything with this, you're gonna have to remap. That bar is on my list for things of next year and I think that should take care of any little lingering precision issues or, or make them better anyway. I've accomplished one of my life goals. I've outlasted the swing set. Now I can have beautiful uninterrupted lawn. Just kidding. It was worth it to have it for the kids when they were young, but they outgrew it. I've got some dirt patches there, which I'm going to nurse the bluegrass. It'll just fill in on its own. I won't even need to do any seeding. But I did have a no-go zone there for the luba. And that shows up on the map. The good news is I don't need to remap anything. I can simply zoom in on it, click edit, and delete those no-go zones. So now mowing in the backyard is a little bit faster and uninterrupted. Less string trimming because the luba can just go over the spot now and not have to go around the swing set. I did, a I did a trade for the swing set to help move things along. Put a basketball hoop in. So I spent yesterday putting this thing in. And it changes the boundary on this cutting zone for the luba. Again, we don't need to remap the entire zone. We can do a modify function on this cutting zone and start off on the zone, then go around the pole, support pole, and carry on and save it as a modification. Let's see if that works. That, that wasn't the best driving on my part, but I found often it, especially in this case where there's no obstructions on the driveway, it's better to drive over and then you can kind of work out your turns better instead of those zero turns all the time, digs up the grass a little bit. But let's try this out and see how it actually performs around there now that I modified it and it's saved and the boundary is different. Well, that's an interesting way to get around it, but it did it. That kind of sums up how it is to live with the Luba after a couple months. It saves a lot of time and I love it, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It does miss some spots occasionally on the edge of those no-go zones too. The, the, it weaves a pretty wide berth, so there's some uncut grass we have to do with the string trimmer. It does run over some of the edges occasionally. It seems like in similar spots. And I don't know if that's positioned to the RTK antenna. And there's just kind of like these zones where the precision isn't that great on, on uh, the GPS precision isn't that great based on if it's directly below it, it seems to kind of mess it up. And then a certain angle when it's having to go through the entire house, the opposite side, which kind of makes sense. 
I've tried remapping or modifying those boundaries and then it's dead on for maybe a time or two and then it seems to float. Now, like I said, it's just a couple of those areas and if it trips a sensor or bumps it, it will automatically kind of go around that area, recognize, hey, I'm running into something. Um, so I don't have to intervene that often, but occasionally I do. It's not perfect. The benefits of it still greatly outweigh those minor negatives. And once it gets around those border passes, um, it's very reliable and it doesn't stop. Um, it just, you can count on it finishing the job. So I kind of babysit it a little bit uh, for the first couple boundary passes once those are done. As I said, the benefits of, of it outweigh any of those minor negatives. But I understand for a lot of people that's going to be a deal breaker. And so it's probably not ready for the mass market yet. I've said this in comments as people uh, give me feedback on the initial review video. And I completely agree. Most people are not going to go through the troubleshooting setup process that I went through. And these kind of minor things that pop up occasionally. Some people like, might lose their minds over it. I understand what it's doing. I understand the limitations of the technology. The thing that gives me great hope is this is just the beginning. As bigger brands get on this, John Deere, Toro, some of those bigger American brands that frankly are quite behind. As soon as they start releasing some of these products, I know Husqvarna is in the market. Um, they had some limitations on slope, which drove me to the Luba. But regardless, it's a great time. The next 10 years are going to be very exciting in this space. I can't wait. Thanks for watching. Adios. So breaking news, as of filming this, I told you there was a software update. I tried to add the path around the no-go zones to reduce the amount of uncut grass around the no-go zones because it didn't have the border pass on those. So I was just gonna, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. So I was just gonna try it again. And there's a software update available. So we're gonna update the Luba and see if that fixes our problem with the no-go zones and truly adds that border cut to it. All right, this is awesome. I don't know if I missed it on the last update, but it's definitely in this update. It's August 10th, it's lunchtime. This upgrade just came out and now in our task mode, when we go to mow, there is an option for our patrol side mowing laps and then also no-go zone mowing laps. So I'm gonna change that to one and side to one and we're gonna see if this actually works. The idea here, normally before, it wouldn't do a lap tight to the no-go zone. It would simply drive up to the no-go zone, stop, and then go back and do its uh, next stripe. But now, we'll see in the program here, it is defining a tight lap around the no-go zone which should make a, a considerable difference on the amount of string trimming we need to do. So this is awesome. Welcome news for a Luba mower. This is one of the spots I'm hoping benefits most from these border passes around the no-go zones. So right now I have to string trim out to here just with this geometry. And without the border pass, this is from the last cut, there's uncut grass out to here. So we'll see after Aluba does the border passes, hopefully that's much tighter and string trimming will be a lot quicker. Well, that first pass did not make a big improvement. It's still out here. I wonder if I have to modify or delete this no-go zone and reprogram it. Maybe the coordinates it was taking off the initial programming before the upgrade had it spaced out for some reason. We'll see how it does on the second pass and then go. This behavior is consistent all the way around the no-go zone. 
it's like taking the outside edge of, of the original programming and staying out there. So I'm gonna try to delete that, hopefully, and reprogram and see if that helps. Although the second pass here is getting closer. Maybe it started with the outside and then now is going to the inside. Maybe that's what's happening because I did two passes. Although it's still taking a pretty wide berth around, but that's definitely what it's doing. It, it did an outside pass and now it's doing the inside. But again, still leaving quite a bit of uncut grass. I deleted the no-go zone, added it back. We'll see if its border on the no-go zone is a little tighter now. Here is a perfect test. We can clearly see right here where it stopped before. And it's kind of going in the same spot. Little tighter in there, but still a pretty healthy gap between where I just drove it to program it and where it's actually going. We'll see if the, we've got two border passes. We'll see if the next one is on the inside of this, which would help slightly. So the second pass is coming on the inside of that first one. And it's slightly improved over what it was doing before. And it is a big improvement over how much was left without the border passes. Hey, that's pretty good. Definitely imp an improvement. So, after the border cut, we've got that about a foot, about a foot of uncut grass. Definitely improvement over the two and a half, three feet that we had before those border passes. But I feel, I but I still feel like it could be improved. Hopefully future updates will tighten that up a little.